Alandina, your, your microphone is off, is okay. muted. Okay. I'm yes, off. let me see. No. Yeah. Are you now. listening to me? Yes. 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 Uh, good afternoon. I'm very sorry be uh, because the thing is my device doesn't allow to have that uh, image uh, something uh, because my device, my computer is quite old. So, my apologies. It's okay. It's good. good afternoon. I think we can start our presentations. My name is Susana Januario. I'm from Institute of Sociology of University of Porto, and I was invited to share this roundtable. So. We have here two presentations. One, the first one is from Samuel Etienne. Um, what if academics decide to publish solo in a do-it-yourself journals? Zines, a new academic journal dedicated to fanzines and consorts. Then Anne Oliveira and Ondina will present what if can be hero just one day? The improbable possibility of an artistic career in Portugal. So before you start, I would like to suggest you to present yourselves, your interests, your work interests, and how explain us how these issues um, you, you are presenting now today arise in your research interests. If you like to do it before you begin with your presentations. I start with the order of the program with you, Samuel, please. This is it. So, uh, yeah, so I'm Samuel Etienne. Uh, I'm a studies director at uh, Ecole Pratique des Études, EPHE, uh, Paris Sciences Lab in Paris, France. Uh, my background is on, on, I'm a geomorphologist, so I'm in earth science. Uh, studies, but uh, I've been a fanzine publisher for more than 30 years ago. Um, so uh, I've moved um, two years ago uh, on, on my uh, expertise area, domain of research, uh, from earth science to fanzine, or also science zines. And uh, I'm more involved in the do-it-yourself uh, publishing. And uh, um, this is going to be my presentation, how uh, scientists of any kind can uh, empower themselves uh, in regards to uh, the publishing industry. Okay, if you want to proceed, then Anne, when is presenting, she will present herself and on dinner too. If you want to proceed your presentation, yes. Cool. yes. I, I, <laughs> so I, I, I do first or? So yes, yes. Okay, 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 okay. So Go for it. launch the publication on the. It's here. Whoops. Okay. So you've got the title. So what if researchers uh, stop feeding the capitalistic academic publishing industry? Uh, what if academics refuse to work for free for high profit making publishers? And what if academics start creating do-it-yourself journals like fanzines? Uh, you know that? Self-governance of science lays on two principles, autonomy and peer evaluations. And to remove gas from uh, self-governance, scientists have adopted metrics at, uh, as an objective judge. Publish or perish became the new divine punishment. At first sight, uh, the web of science is a matter of metrics. But beside science, we have the web, which has evolved as a trap. It's a trap. In the web of science, the Spider-Man is always hungry and the Spider-Man is having you for dinner tonight. In the web of science, you will feel like you're being eaten by a thousand million shivering furry holes. And you know that in the morning, you will wake up in the shivering cold. For it's much too late to get away, but we can still turn on the light. As stated by Mark Neff, 2020, Economists may not have terms adequate to describe a market as dysfunctional as the one operating for academic publishing. Extraordinary profit margins, 33%, echo with increasing publishing fees on intellectual property grabbing. Predatory publishing is the new black market. 
we may have collectively forgot that scientific journals were originally created by academic individuals or small organizations like Société Savante with no given publishing skills. Uh, Antipodi, the radical geographical journal, uh, was created by undergraduate students in 1969, okay, and it spread all across the USA. The first issues were mimeographed with cut and paste editing that will become more familiar half a decade later with uh, do it yourself point zines. When French sociologists Luc Boltanski and Pierre Bourdieu, Bourdieu launched Act de la Recherche en Sciences Sociales in uh, 1975, they had no experience in self publishing. Uh, Boltanski confessed afterwards that he was directly inspired by Strumpf, a French comic fanzine published at that time, to create a fanzine dedicated to sociology. Uh, Strumpf in French means Smurfies. Innovation in academic research takes place in shadowed areas, and academic publishers must support innovation by providing efficient ways of dissemination. But over the last two decades, publishers have steadily transferred the editing process in the hands of researchers, editing maps, editing figures, editing text, filling templates, formatting bibliography, etc. Predatory publishers, uh, predatory publishers have abandoned the time-consuming and costly process of editing, becoming solely printers, binders, sellers, but creating high profits in the end, and often often trying to keep the copyright on research they have not funded. So we must realize that we have the skills to create and run our own academic journal without the grip of the publishing industry. We have power of creation and control in our hands more than we think. Uh, two examples, in uh, uh, 1998, while I was a PhD student, I founded with my friend Jérôme Guibert the non-for-profit DIY publishing company, Mélanie Sepin. And in 2002, weeks after the completion of my own PhD thesis, we launched a new academic journal, Volume, to offer a publishing support for young researchers studying popular music. There was no support at that time for this kind of, of uh, new research. This journal still exists and is not the French Journal of Popular uh, Music Studies. At that time, we initiated this editorial adventure without professional publishing skills, but we had the 10 years of funds in publishing background that gave us the audacity to try. Since a couple of years, AK Zine have emerged. Academic zines are cheap publications that record and support research in action. They can be written, edited, and published within a single day. They capture in real time science in progress. With Zin's journal, we have the project to run an international peer journal dedicated to the studies of amateur and do-it-yourself media of any kind, from fanzine to webzine, perzine to science zines, artzine to poesine, and even uh, alternate history zines uh, that are very uh, numerous. Zin's is a multidisciplinary uh, journal open to all scientific disciplines, uh, from social sciences to medical sciences, art and design, media studies. Zins is run by volunteer forces. It's a print journal, but all papers remain copyleft and will be available for free online within two years after publication. Publishing includes also a web TV uh, with special events every month, and this web TV will be, la will be launched tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, to conclude, if you allow me to paraphrase Mark Perry from Seminal Point Funds in Sniffing Blue, I will conclude this way. So that's about it. If this Robert Maxwell up in Oxford can do it, why can't you? So everybody starts an academic fanzine and flood the market. Let's destroy all the established academics' mind. Thank you. Thank you. Anna and Andine. Anna, be my guest, please. Yeah. <laughs> Just, um, so I, I can start by presenting myself. I'm I'm Anoli. Sorry. Yes, please. <laughs> I'm I'm Anna Oliveira. I'm a sociologist and a PhD candidate uh, on urban studies at the ISCTE, University Institute uh, of Lisbon. 
And uh, my research and my PhD, it's about uh, careers in music, in, 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 in the independent music scene uh, in, uh, in Portugal. And uh, the presentation of today, shared with, with Ondina, is, uh, is related uh, with, uh, with, uh, with it. Um, uh, Wondina is an example of a, a music career in the independence uh, in, uh, in Portugal. Um, and to not waste too much time, I, I will start the, the presentation. Uh, the main issue here is to study how a person born in a non-native English speaking country, which has which was close to the world during almost 40 years of dictatorship and born uh, within a working class family and with poor health condition, even so played the drums, composed music, sang, performed, exhibited artwork, wrote books and took university degrees. The answer can lie in the power of the will, the self-discipline and self-motivation that empowered this person. But who are we talking about? Let's introduce Ondina Pires, who was the only female drummer in Portugal during the post-punk post period. Uh, in the mid-70s, in high school, the wish to do several artistic things arose in Ondina, and actually she did them together with some school friends. Uh, she used to write surrealistic texts as well as poetry, to draw, make collages and paint. At her friend's home, especially between 77 and 84, she did the first rehearsals using xylophones and music boxes, voice experiments, uh, while her mates played acoustic guitars in a wild way as it is for electric guitars. She even built uh, a violin to produce hot sounds in fact, Ondina's tastes and interests for different areas of knowledge and artistic manifestation is a touchstone uh, in her trajectory. In February uh, 78, Ondina started by playing the congas. Later, between April and May, she went on playing the drums in a self-taught way. As she had no money to buy the drums, a generous schoolmate allowed her to play his drums in his studio at home, she resorted to tin boxes uh, for cookies, wooden share tops, or small metal pieces to practice the beats and build the rhythms with a pair of drumsticks. Ondina used to listen to jazz drummers, uh, for instance, Art Blakey, as well as African and Asian ethnic drums and punk and post-punk music. And these were her teachers. Since her childhood, she was very fond on the drums sound, and as an adolescent, she, she realized that there were, there were not almost any female drummer players. The majority of male listeners and music fans considered that playing the drums was a very macho thing because you, you would need to have strong muscles. The first serious musical project that uh, Ondina joined to as a drummer singer and composer was Ezra Pound de Loucura, or in English, Ezra Pound and the Madness. With its members, Ondina shared different personal, artistic and poetic references. The group rehearsed almost every weekend in order to present itself to the public, and in fact, together with other bands from Lisbon and also from Porto, Ezra Pound and the Madness presented their project at a university in, uh, in Lisbon. And it was an alternative musical discourse with phonetic poems on the stage displays of paintings. It was a total challenge uh, among a mainstream rock audience. In 84, this project was too much for a very conservative male uh, public. Bottles and objects were thrown to the stage because the band's music did not follow the trend of that, of that era. Uh, we can consider that as a found uh, was a Portuguese Norway project as it was happening in New York. Some months later, after the, this concert, João Pest, the Portuguese musician who is still uh, with an active role in the National Musical Panorama, invited Ondina to start a project with him. 
It was called Pop Del Art. Once again, Ondina Sang composed and played the drums. She also made the cover of the compilation Divergencias that was produced and published by the independent label Ama Humanta. Uh, in May 86, Ondina left Pop Del Art and went on an, uh, other artistic areas that have always interested her. She continued writing and making comics and colleges at the same time that she was taking her college degrees. Uh, collaborating in the Portuguese newspaper and taking care of her family. In 92, uh, a, a colleague from college, uh, Cesar Gomes, invited Ondina to join his band as a performer, dancer, composer, and singer. It was the beginning of a controversial, alternative, funny, and visionary musical project called The Great Lesbian Show. From uh, 93 to June 2008, this surrealistic band that had only one female member, Ondina, was widely publicized by the Portuguese newspaper Blitz. This band played in many places side by side with American bands, and it also performed in Portuguese TV channels and rocker two CDs. The Great Lesbian Show concerts are still legendary in the memory of, two, of many who attended them. In June 2008, Ondina was no more a young person, and her fragile health condition got worse, hence she had to quit completely in the musical project and dedicate herself to an academic life. Nevertheless, she continued producing artistic objects of art and publishing her books as an independent producer with her own money. So, would Ondina's life trajectory have been different if in 2008 she had not given up on her musical project? In the re reflection exercise that we undertook to answer this question, we identified some key aspects that we believe have been determinant for her trajectory. Firstly, the political and social environment where she was born helps to contextualize her trajectory. Born in the 61, she experienced the last years of her 40 year dictatorship. It compelled the country to close on itself economically and culturally. In addition, after the Carnation Revolution, the newborn democracy did not evolve in such a way that it, it could reshape the majority of the Portuguese people's minds to a broader way of thinking, feeling, and acting. Secondly, Portugal is a very small country, always struggling against bankruptcy and always trying to have a voice in the world. The Portuguese musical and cultural market is small and it has no, no place for alternative or experimental projects in terms of a professional career. The, ma the majority of foreigner audiences ignore Portuguese independent artists and musicians. From, 60s, uh, from 70s, the world has been designed to receive only the Anglo-Saxonic power and influence, politics, art, economics, and so on. British and American films, bands, and artwork flood the, the, the global cultural market. In small, non-native English-speaking countries, those who dare to be alternative face many difficulties to ensure the viability and sustainability of their projects. A third aspect which makes the, the effect of the previous point worse is the fact that Portugal does not integrate the dominant sociocultural, political, and economic framework in the globalization. It is the Commonwealth countries that it dictates the rules, and, re and recently, Asian countries as China, India, and Japan. A fourth aspect brings us back to gender issues. Currently, the world of music still reflects the gender inequalities that permeate societies, stereotypes and perspectives when it comes to the roles women and men should play. Portuguese society has always been very conservative towards gender roles. Despite some female musical projects being active, uh, they pay the price of their independence. Female musicians struggle in terms of visibility and money. And finally, 
uh, fifth aspect concerns to the progressive closure of formal media, radio, television, uh, newspapers, magazines to independent projects. They are frozen in tiny niches and the social networks that replace the role of the media are not enough to publicize them. Therefore, the musicians must have a powerful propaganda machine financed by major labels to show their projects, otherwise they face extinction. In addition, we have now the corona pandemic situation that aggravates everything. Extinction and oblivion are a tremendous price that independent artists face nowadays. And to be a hero for one day doesn't pay the bills. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Andina, do you want to say something? Uh, first, I would like to congratulate uh, Samuel Etienne and uh, uh, Zine Journal, Academic Journal, because uh, this thing of the do-it-yourself uh, attitude or philosophy uh, has a tremendous price. It doesn't pay the bills as Anne Oliveira stressed out. And it has been uh, the main issue in my life. I'm some kind of Superman or Batman. I have two lives. So at the same time, I have to work to pay the bills. I, on the other side, I try to do what I like most and that I think that can be important for the publics, because when a creator creates things or a scientist researches uh, something and uh, or invent or an inventor invents something, want to show the, the uh, so the people, artists, scientists, everyone want to show to the other to the other people their work. Things cannot stay in the drawer. And, uh, but the, the price of do it yourself is, is very high uh, and the process is very slow. And for instance, um, in what concerns Zine, the academic journal, uh, I would like to uh, make a question, to put a question to uh, Samuel. So imagine that uh, we all, Susanna and, and me, uh, would like to publish uh, um, a paper or, or a song, whatever, in Zine, uh, in, in order that the public could listen to or read, depending on the, on the support, how would be paid? So how could this, this work, this intellectual, because it's intellectual work, could be paid, please? Uh, um, so as I, I told you, Zin, so this is a, the printer, I'll say, of course, it does work with the, I can't see it. <laughs> it's, <not really laughs> it's printed, uh, it's in full color for the, the, the first issue. And, uh, you know, in the, in the um, uh, academic publishing, because it's a, uh, it's an academic journal, but as it's concerned with zines, it's, uh, it does not uh, welcome only academics. Of course, zinester are welcome. Uh, zine librarians are welcome, of course, to contribute. Um, now in the academic publishing industry, most of the time, especially in, uh, for example, life of earth science, you, you have to pay to publish. This is uh, quite amazing, but for the last uh, four or five years, when your paper is accepted, they say, okay, you have done all the work, uh, reviewing work, etc. For and then they say, okay, we can publish it, but now you're gonna pay uh, two, three, four hundred euros to publish your papers, and then uh, you, your papers do not belong to you. So this is quite amazing. So we, uh, there's no charging fees uh, in the in the journal, as uh, everybody is volunteer to to work uh, uh, to, for the editing. Um, the, the author uh, still keep the copyright uh, on his, uh, there's, it's copyright, so, so we don't take the, the, the right. So if they want to publish it elsewhere, they can, uh, they can do. Uh, at this time, we don't pay the contributors uh, because the only, uh, it's a self-funding uh, journal on all the costs uh, are, are for the printing, the printing costs are self-funded on the, and, um, for the moment, nobody else is paid. But 
if I take the example of uh, volume, uh, the journal uh, I created with uh, Marie Pierre Bognol and Jerome Guibert 20 years ago, I I'm not involved in this journal anymore for, for the last 10 years, but it still exists. Uh, 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 at the beginning, um, nobody was paid, but now uh, they have secured uh, uh, funding to pay the old translators. So they proceed with translator who are paid uh, to translate the, the, the papers. But um, as you might know, or, or, or you don't know, in the, in the academy, when you publish uh, most of the time, I mean, 90% of the time, you are never paid uh, for, for the publication. Uh, I know that with volume, they can pay also when they use um, photographs um, or uh, illustration, they pay uh, the graphic uh, design, for example. But for this, I hope we will have uh, uh, enough money to pay the contributors uh, in the in coming years. But for, for the moment, uh, no. Right, thank you. And uh, uh, so uh, I see that both in an academic uh, view or path, or even in an artistic path, the do-it-yourself uh, has, has a, 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 a big problem, a big issue that concerns first advertising the work. How can independent people, so independent artists, scientists, researchers, etc., can be uh, noticed by the other, by different publics, mm -hmm. uh, not only the mainstream, so because after all, we all would like to have different publics, not always the friends or the same, the same uh, old mates from uh, high school, whatever. And uh, on the other hand, you must, uh, I see that you must continue to, to work in another job yeah. to, to have your, um, your post, so, uh, to live after all, because I, I, I've done, uh, I've done a, a, a poster uh, where a female uh, character in, I, I'm going to show it's better, just one second, Anna, if you want to state uh, something about this, the five uh, main statements, I'm going to bring the poster, okay? okay. Just okay. one second, please. <laughs> yes, thank you. No, I, um, I, I I was thinking about the, the results of my of, of my PhD and it's <laughs> and it's related with uh, uh, what Tondino was saying and most of the musicians and and not only musicians but different actors in the in the music field that I interviewed I'm awfully sorry I'm awfully has, sorry. Uh, has to have a a, a day job. If I can, if I can say so, they have to to work. Uh, oh, this is the poster. <laughs> so we have uh, we have a female octopus. Uh, <laughs> she has to uh, to to go to work. She uh, she wants to compose music. She wants to play the drums. She wants to 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 do the the house cleaning, etc., etc., etc. And the thing is, the do-it-yourself matters with market gender, market gender, and uh, music. In my case. So, or on, on Dina's case, I prefer to use the third person here because if I am the corpus, I must be now the third person. So, and, and when you, I, sorry, you draw uh, if I DIY, I DIY. Uh, yes. So is it a reference to Virgin Prunes? If I die, I die. If I die, I die. Indeed. So you like yeah. version prunes. <laughs> totally good. Totally uh, good. DIY, DIY is dying too. <laughs> yes. When I when I was drawing, uh, it came to my uh, to my mind the the old version prunes song. If I die, I die. So if I do it yourself, I yeah. do it yourself. So <laughs> I'm always doing it yourself. And I, I, must, I must confess to you and to the public, to those who are listening, or that maybe tomorrow can listen to what we said, I'm very tired of um, this kind of do it yourself without being rewarded because after all, I paid a lot in terms of energy, 
of uh, work of health and even money. For instance, uh, in Portugal, uh, as Anne pointed out, we don't have an alternative independent, independent big market. It's just always the same people. Of course, that in France, the alternative, uh, uh, alter alternative people or independent uh, mm -hmm. artists or, or researchers, um, they have the alternative mean is bigger than for instance for uh, in Portugal. Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. Okay, it's like staying on stage. For a small countries such as Portugal is really, really difficult and complex to do this kind of parallel life. And I must confess, I feel very tired. Uh, and um, you can ask, well, if you are tired, if you feel tired, why do you keep on do it yourself? Why don't you stop and uh, take, take a nap, do uh, other things? The thing is, when one is very fond of arts, arts, science, and knowledge in general, it's very uh, difficult to say goodbye to his or her interests. I don't know if you are understanding what I'm explaining. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I could stop doing things like writing books, like writing papers, so I gave up music, as Anna said. However, there is always that small bug inside us. Do it now, hmm. come on. Now you are going to, to make um, a comic book. And then, okay, I have an idea for, for a funny book. Then I have this kind of thing um, it's good when you are very free and you have money to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you are working hard, and nowadays we are working working even harder than in the previous, uh, before the COVID-19 period, mm -hmm. because we keep all, all the time online with our mates, um, so uh, mm -hmm. job mates, and mm -hmm. for instance, in these kind of conferences. Uh, I don't know if you want to make a question or to yes, I, 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 Maybe I have a question for you, on, on Anna. Um, about uh, what you say, what important thing you say is about the size of, the, of Portugal. It's uh, uh, small, but uh, uh, one question was, uh, what about the Lusophone world? I mean, Brazil, was there any connection or opportunity in Brazil? It's not so no wave or uh, uh, maybe the alternative scenes were not so developed in the 1980s. On, on my, the question is also more historical. Uh, for example, is the, uh, the weight of the Estado Novo, the Salazar, uh, was still pre uh, important in the 1980s and uh, was something you were feeling that uh, impeached you to go outside uh, Portugal? Uh, yes, uh, uh, that's, uh, I'm going to answer your question. So, uh, before, uh, recently we have, in fact, technology that on one hand helps us to connect, to do things. On the other hand, uh, it, it doesn't save a, a lot of time to do uh, in another, um, other, other kind of things, but uh, in what concerns Brazil and Portugal, there are recent, uh, recent, um, how can I put this? Uh, the, the relationship between Brazil and Portugal in terms of academic uh, papers, of academic uh, thinking, I, I, I suppose it's it's a reality. In terms of artistic, uh, artistic uh, expression, I don't uh, think so because it's far away. And even if we want to sell our, our products, as for instance, uh, for, as for instance um, independent uh, female group or a band, a rock band, 
there are so many in Brazil and it's so far away from Portugal that we continue in this um, almost closed uh, bubble that is Portugal. However, I, I, I noticed that some friends of mine, they are more or less 27 years old, 25 years old, so they could be my daughters or even almost granddaughters. Um, they can they 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 have um, the way to do what they like to do, but not in Portugal. For instance, I have a recent um, a re a recent uh, case example like Rita Braga, who is an independent musician. She composes, she sings, etc. But she lives, for instance, she lives in London. She keeps all the time in London and she comes to Portugal from time to time. But she cannot live here in Portugal from her music. She has to sell uh, outside. When, so when I quit uh, music in 2008, so, so when I gave up everything. Before that, I had the opportunity to, to be on stage with my mates, with my, my colleagues, and sharing the stage with foreigner and uh, Portuguese bands. And when we tried, we kept trying and we kept trying to go um, to, to other countries such as France, Spain, uh, England, England, etc. And it was always a, a, a big problem, the issue, because first they would say, oh, yes, we are in interest when uh, we were in our The Great Lesbian Show project. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, that's very funny. The name of the band is the project. It must end they could see some samples of our work. However, later they would give a no or um, the silence, the complete silence. So on the other hand, on the other side, I also had personal problems as well as the other members of the projects. And uh, they have families and, and uh, jobs, etc. And we were afraid to quit our jobs, yeah. become extremely poor, mm -hmm. okay, to fall in extreme poverty. And that kept us um, a, a, away from a career, we can say a career, an artistic career. So in Portugal, it was impossible to, to, to proceed, to continue with an independent career. No market. Outside, there are so many, there are thousands and thousands of projects, of bands, of collectives, associations, etc., etc. that what the hell these Portuguese uh, people, what do they want from us? We have so many... Uh, interesting, uh, weird, odd thing, uh, bands, projects. So that's what um, the impeachment uh, came from that part. So, or you continue in an independent way and you become poor without house, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or you have to quit due to even to. Um, the process of getting older. So it, it would be a caricature to go on stage and perform as uh, we, we used to, to, to do. And uh, now it's too late. It's like, it's, I'm too young to die and too old to rock and roll as Jethro told <laughs> song. It's more or less this. I, I don't know if you have more questions and... Uh, uh, more general, uh, maybe for an hour. I, I don't know, Susanna, if you, you want yes, to. Yes, uh, I have a few questions to you and to Ondine. Um, uh, I'm going.